For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. My name is Gabe, and I live with bipolar. I'm Michelle, and I live with schizophrenia. And today we are discussing the stupid shit people have said to us, either because we're schizophrenic, like myself, or bipolar, like Gabe is. We've heard a lot of just nonsense. Gabe, what is something that somebody has said to you that you've just been like, did you really just say that to me? That's the wackest, most dumb thing I've ever heard. Why did you just say that? How did you respond? Go! (laughs) Well, first I want to say that it's important that we let people know that we're talking about like, I I suppose what people call microaggressions. You know, obviously people have told me that they think that I'm violent or crazy or can't hold down jobs. And I know they've done the same to you. We've shared each other's emails. But I'm talking about the little things. The little things that people don't think are insulting. Like, Like this one. My personal favorite... Just cheer up. <gasps> I mean, I want to yell. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, oh my God, the answer was right there. I'm also going to make more money and lose weight. You, sir, are amazing. Yeah, just be happy. Why can't you just be happy? Listen, if I could just be happy, there'd be no people with depression, huh? Well, if right. If be happy, there'd be no, nothing, no thing called an antidepressant. If I could just be happy... I mean, somebody once asked me at my pop-up shop, why don't you just stop talking to yourself? What? I mean, in fairness, though, I too have asked you why you don't just stop talking to yourself. But the thing is, I've tried. And you know what? I I don't even know I'm doing it half the time. Exactly. Let's, Let's be a little kind. Not everybody is saying these things to us to be mean. It, it, it's not a malicious thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit my mom for a minute because, you know, as, as you know, I love making fun of my mother on this show and she, she, she's a dear woman and a great listener. But one of the most hurtful things that she ever said to me is, are you sure you need all these pills? Oh, mm. well, I don't want to um, call out my mother or anything who I may have just seen who likes to bring up all the time. Oh, so you take that pill and doesn't that pill make you lose weight? But doesn't then that other pill make you like not eat? Are you taking two pills that that are making you less hungry? Is that really okay? Are you sure you want to do that? I've heard it about four hundred times in the past two years. You know what I think is funny? Issues. I think a bunch of people are like, "There's a pill that makes you less hungry and makes you lose weight. What is it?" There's a whole bunch of people that are gonna fake schizophrenia tomorrow to get this magical pill that makes you lose weight. People have told me that if I stop taking the meds, I'll feel better. That it's the medication that's making me sick. That's the that's just the dumbest thing that's I've ever heard. That's like something paranoia would say to me. Like, why would somebody say that to you? When it comes to advocacy, I live by one simple rule: people aren't mean; they're stupid. And I know that that sounds funny to say. I don't mean that like they're stupid in their everyday life. It's just that the thing they're saying isn't meant to be mean. It's because it comes from a place of ignorance. It's Hanlon's razor. That, that why assume malice when stupidity will do? But why would they think your medication is making you feel sick, but when you went on medication because you felt sick? I know, I know. And I was put on psychiatric medications when I was in the hospital, suffering from psychosis, delusions. I was suicidal. I was so depressed. I wanted to die so bad. I was, I was so close to death. And these medications and four years of therapy and help and getting the right combination made me into the great person I am today. And they want me to stop taking them so that I can go back to the train wreck that, that screwed my way through a strip club. I, this, is, Dude, this is not healthy. I have a great idea, Gabe. Do it. We spend two days together off the meds, videotape the whole thing, and then say, this is why we take our meds. The sad part is, is that wouldn't work because in two days, a lot of the meds would still be in our system. So we'd actually be just fine. And somebody would say, I told you so. Oh, Which no. brings me. I'd be nuts. I'd oh, be yeah, absolutely yeah. bonkers. Are you kidding me? That's true. So you go off your meds for two days and I'll film you. Which I've done. You, you know we have that. We should, we should do this on a, a, another show. Because we had a couple of shows we had to cancel because you had some med issues. We did? We did. I don't even remember. I, don't even remember. I know. You, 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 you do know because we've talked about it. Stop playing dumb. Shut but up. We, 
we we should we should we should do an episode about that in the future. So that's a teaser, ladies and gentlemen. But here's the here's the problem with this medication thing, and I, I want to say it sincerely. I I know I know we're a little bit off track, but there's all these videos of people living with bipolar disorder in my space. I don't know how it is in your space, but there's all these videos of people living with bipolar disorder. They're on YouTube. There's all these blogs and like, I stopped taking my medication and I'm fine. And I'm doing the following things and my life improved the following ways. And the medication was just a crutch and I don't need it anymore. And I am perfectly well. Here's the problem with that. Bipolar disorder is a spectrum disease. Even when I was unmedicated, I had moments, long moments where I was fine. I was right in the middle. I wasn't suicidally low. I wasn't in godlike mania. I was just, I was just fine. So I would make the video. The video would be uploaded to YouTube. I would say, hey, I live with bipolar disorder. I'm not on meds and I am fine because I was. And then I would either go manic or go depressed and I wouldn't be around to make a follow-up video. The video where I'm claiming I'm fine is going to live forever. And you know, when I finally drive a car off a cliff or die by suicide, I won't be around to take the video down, thereby ensuring that my video will, you know, put lots of people in harm's way. Um, wow. That's pretty yeah. intense. That is pretty intense. Well, you know, I went to Niagara Falls. I'm just saying one lady, she lived going over in a barrel. So just because she lived doesn't mean all the other people didn't die. I'm well, just- in fact, most people did die. Most people totally died, but they always tell you the story of the lady in the barrel that didn't die going over Niagara Falls. Right. That lady was lucky. Yeah, she was very lucky. And most people realize that getting in a barrel and going over Niagara Falls is a really bad idea. But for some reason, when it comes to medications for psychiatric illness, they only need that one lady in the barrel and they're like, boom, following her. <laughs> that, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, but they're following her off Niagara Falls. So what is the most offensive thing? I mean, just like really dig deep. What's the most offensive thing somebody said to you and how did it impact you? Okay, the most offensive thing anyone's ever said to me, I was at my pop-up shop selling my merchandise and stuff, and somebody was looking at uh, the jewelry next, that was next to me, and then I just start chit-chatting with her husband, just about nothing. She comes over, looks at my booth, and I go, you know, have you ever met anyone with schizophrenia? And she goes, you know what, nope, and I never want to. And I was like, okay, well, you can move on. That's it? You just said you can move on? You didn't tell her that you had schizophrenia? No, because I have, you know, I wasn't going to make her look like an idiot. So I didn't. That, I didn't that, that. That's, that's not why. You don't mind making people look like an idiot. You make me look like an idiot on this show 20 times a day, but you let a complete well, it, it was the New first, York City off? No, it was the first summer that I was doing it. So I didn't quite have the confidence that I had now. How did that affect you, though? Be, be honest. Be, be vulnerable, Michelle, for a minute. Drop the pomp and circumstance, and how did you really feel about that? I just, I just felt like that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, that's what I need to break stigma. Because, I mean, for that person to, like, see my booth says Schizophrenic NYC, and that I'm standing there, and then I'm going to say something like that, she should have at least somehow thought that I was in a relation of some way to schizophrenia that she would not have said that so rudely to my face. That's true. It was just very rude. So do you think if you had like cancer NYC, people would respond to you differently? I'm not trying to pretend that cancer patients have it better. I I mean, we, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I I just mean, do you think that people would at least pretend to be nice to you versus how aggressive they are to people with mental illness right now? I mean, people have approached my pop-up shop like aggressively on occasion. One guy came up to me last year, put his hands down right in front and just goes, can you explain this to me? And I was like, uh, sure. And when I did and he, I go, well, I'm schizophrenic. And he goes, so you're schizophrenic. And I said, yes. He goes, oh, you're very brave. And he like calmed down and he moved on. Another time a guy goes, is this a joke? And I was like, no, you know? And then another time, a woman just yelled at me and ran away. People see that word schizophrenic and all the, they think I'm making a joke when I'm really not. If it was cancer at NYC, they'd be, oh, what is this about? Tell me more. You know, they wouldn't. The thing is, a lot of people are very nice to me. 95% of people are really, really, really nice to me. Some people look at me weird and then and some people get mad. But I mean, cancer at NYC, I think I would just hear a lot of really sad stories. I don't know. It wouldn't hit people the same way because I don't think it would just like strike a nerve in some people or people would be like, what is this? I don't know. It'd be different. 
That's very true. I'm going to name off a list of common things that are said to people who live with mental illness, and I want you to tell me how they make you feel. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. You'll feel better tomorrow. No, I won't. It's all in your head. No, it's not. This too will pass. Okay. Here's the thing. Do you know the story of this too will pass? No. It is a uh, Old Testament story of, I believe, it was a king, King Solomon or King, king something. And uh, he wanted a ring that's, that every time he looked at it, it would make him sad. Or every time he looked at it, it would make him happy. And the ring that he finally found said, this too shall pass. So that ring, you look at it when you're happy, this too shall pass, you'll get sad. The ring when you're sad, this too shall pass, you'll get happy. So when people say this too shall pass, they don't know the meaning behind it because this too shall pass means when you're happy, you'll get sad. When you're sad, you'll get happy. So you'll never be content. So yeah, so that's the biggest nonsense of a quote I've ever heard because they don't even know what it means. That's very true. Yes. All right, you ready for some more? Let's go. You have nothing to be anxious about. Oh my God, I want to strangle a person that says that. I love how you said I want to strangle somebody for that. We're trying to break the stigma that people with schizophrenia and bipolar I disorder. I, <laughs> I won't do it, but I'll want to. Because like, that's just, uh, when you're, especially when you're anxious, you're like, uh, in the first place. You have nothing to be anxious about. You know what? Well, you have nothing to say to me. That's smart. That's very, very fair. Don't worry, be happy. I'll just sing that song. Go for a walk and you'll feel better. You know, go for a walk and get out of my face. <laughs> I love you, Michelle. <laughs> now this one, I don't believe that anybody has ever said to you, so it might handcuff you for a moment, but you look normal to me. The look of complete despair on your face right now, realizing that nobody has ever told you that you look normal is, is just, it's just worth so much money to me. You look so confused. No one has ever said you look normal to me. After I gave a speech, somebody walked up to me and they said, you just don't look like somebody with mental illness to me. And I said, well, I live with mental illness and this is what I look like. So, so I do. And they had a hard time with the stereotype. And I understand that because I did too. When I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, even though I had never been violent, I don't have any violent tendencies. I've never wanted to be violent. The first thing that I really thought was, oh my God, I'm so glad they caught it before I hurt somebody. Why did I think that? This wasn't based in any reality. It's because I also believed the stereotypes. I, I believed that because I had a mental illness, violence must be around the corner and it you know that was very tragic it was it was it made it very sad that i believed i created all the stigma in the world that would later be used against me because i wasn't educated and because i didn't know it's one of the reasons that i do this i feel like i i have to put goodness back in the world for all i took from it which bit me in the ass hard why do you do this michelle why do i do this I'm just trying to be a role model of some sort. Can I be a role model? Am I too dumb? I don't know. I'm just trying to show people that just because you have a diagnosis or just have schizophrenia or just whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that your life is over, that you should be upset, that you should be depressed, that you should be bummed out. You can totally be happy, live life, love a good life, have a fun, silly life. I mean, you might have to make adjustments, but I, I just want to show people that you could still be good. And if people are going to say dumb things to you, like whatever, like let them, whatever. Here's one that, that bothers you, but doesn't bother me. The weather is so bipolar. Well, I hear the weather is so schizophrenic, the schizophrenic weather. Does that bother you? Well, yes, because it makes no sense. I'm like, is the weather hearing stuff? I don't understand what that means. That is a fair point. I I don't get offended when people say the weather is bipolar because bipolar is polar opposites, two, two opposites. So if it's hot one day and cold the next, then the weather is in fact bipolar. Do you feel that when people say the weather is schizophrenic that it's an insult? I think it's an insult because it's a misuse of the word. And why is it a misuse of the word? Because, because that's not what schizophrenia is. They're, th they're confusing it with like 
multiple personality ups and downs of nonsense. I don't understand what they mean by it. What's the definition that they're trying to say? The weather is schizophrenic, meaning it's going from one wonder, one from hot to cold, from rainy to not like it can't make a decision. Cause that's not, that doesn't make any sense to me. So you think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it bothers you that people are using the word schizophrenia or schizophrenic, but they don't bother to understand what it means. It's like they're so close. They've heard the term, they're using it incorrectly, but they're well, so close to I learning mean, what it is. If you're going to like say something that's offensive, at least get your facts straight. That's fair. So it's okay to be offensive as long as you're accurate. Well, I'm just saying, if you're going to be offensive, at least know what you're saying. Want to learn more about mental health, mental illness, and psychology, but not be bored? The Psych Central Show is an award-winning podcast that speaks candidly with experts in these fields to break down complex topics into easily understood nuggets of useful information. Hosted by our very own Gabe Howard, along with Vincent M. Wales. Available on your favorite podcast player or at psychcentral.com slash show. Another thing that people say a lot is it's mind over matter. And I always want to yell, hey, dumbass, it's my mind that matters. And, and they, but here's the thing. I, I don't want to yell, hey, dumbass. It just makes me sad that they don't understand. Mental Health America, a, a group that I really love, they have this... Um, initiative. Yes, they have this initiative called Stop the Crazy Talk, where using words like this is nuts, you're crazy, they want to end all of that. And I have mixed feelings on this. You know, look, I, I, I understand, you know, saying you're crazy, that's crazy, that's nuts. I, I, I understand that it could be offensive. Listen, listen I, there's nothing I hate more than people turning words into, into bad words. Like, it's really annoying. Stop making words bad words. Word crazy is not a bad word. The word nuts is not a bad word. Well, it's the context that could be well, it's different if so, you could say like, oh, like, uh, you're so beautiful. Or you could say, yeah, you're beautiful. Uh-huh, yeah, you're beautiful. I mean, well, hello. We need to stop the pretty talk. No longer use the word beautiful and this problem is resolved. Exactly. So it's how you say it. So stop with the nonsense. Don't make everything a bad word. Can I just speak? I just want to speak. Am I allowed to speak? And this is where it bugs me because I think that we're ignoring context over words. For example, when I was let go from my job, nobody called me crazy. Nobody called me insane. They didn't call me nuts. They didn't call me a whack job, but they made it very clear that because of my illness, I couldn't work there anymore. The context was that I wasn't good enough because they didn't trust me because of my illness, but they didn't use any of the forbidden words. So I should feel good about it. No, I felt awful. I felt awful, but I guess it's okay because they didn't call me crazy. And this is the struggle that I have with initiatives like Stop the Crazy Talk. I understand the idea behind them, but the things that offend me more than anything, and like what we've been talking about, the things that offend you are the little slights. You don't look schizophrenic. You don't sound bipolar. Well, I'm surprised you're mentally ill because you seem so smart. Those are the things that hurt me, a I know, person living with mental illness. What would hurt you more? You don't look schizophrenic or you totally look schizophrenic? Or, I mean, bipolar. <laughs> you, you remember that I'm the bipolar one. I, right? I, I forgot for a second. You know, I just, I was projecting. I was projecting. You were projecting? It, the thing is, is I get a little bothered when people say you don't look bipolar because I think, well, what do you want me to look like? I guess I just don't understand what a bipolar looks like. I asked somebody what they thought a crazy person looked like, and they said it's somebody like rocking back and forth and drooling and, and the tremors. And that really affected me a lot because that idea of a crazy person, those symptoms are actually side effects of some of the original antipsychotics. So, it's like saying that cancer makes your hair fall out. Cancer doesn't make your hair fall out. Some cancer treatments do. The tremors, the rocking back and forth, as we commonly think of a schizophrenic, that's a medicated schizophrenic who was on you know, medications that, that are long since off the market, th thankfully. But isn't that sad? You, you got saddled with a stereotype that's not even your fault. That's you trying to get better. And now people say that makes you look crazy. 
The thing is, I feel like when I tell people I'm schizophrenic, I don't get the you don't look schizophrenic or whatever, because who in their right mind would ever tell anyone they're schizophrenic if they weren't schizophrenic? You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't say, oh, really? You know, so I think they would believe me. I don't think anyone would find it like like a surprise, really. But I mean... What does a schizophrenic act like? I mean, I mean, I belong to, you know, the, the community fountain house. So in there you have like high functioning, low functioning of every different kind of things. I mean, there's one, one girl that I'm like friendly with. She's not as high functioning as me, but I, I didn't know really what she had. But one day we were in a meeting together and a bunch of us are there and I'm sitting next to her and I see her do something that I commonly do. So I go, oh, hey are you schizophrenic? And she's like, oh yeah, 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 I am. And it's just, it's, it's different because they're, from being a schizophrenic, I can see it in other people. But if you're not schizophrenic, you might look at me or her and say, what is that person doing? That's really, really weird. But what I'm trying to kind of just show and whatever, it's just, there's certain things we do. There's certain things we don't do. And being, looking schizophrenic, I don't know what that means to other people. I can spot schizophrenia in a lot of people, but people think they can spot schizophrenia because they're talking about homeless people, but I can spot it in a, you know. They're talking about the stereotype. They, yeah, they, they're yeah. not looking for the stereotype. They're looking for the stereotype, but even real. if you're high functioning I, and my medium functioning, I can spot it very easily in the different people I meet there. You can kind of tell which people are schizophrenic and which are not just if you buy talking and stuff like that, I'm just saying, but if people are just looking at the stereotype, they're going to get a completely different point of view, which makes me think that like, they just watch the movies. Yeah. They believe pop culture. It's funny. It was just funny because what I saw her doing was something that uh, a classmate caught me doing in the 11th grade. What was it? Laughing to myself. Really? Just, you sit there and you burst into laughter at, at, while nothing's going on around you. You're in your own head and you're laughing hysterically. So I noticed that she was doing it and I know that I do that and I go, oh, hey, you, you have schizophrenia. And she's like, yeah. And I remember, I always remember that time in 11th grade, I was laughing hysterically to myself and what's going on and a girl three seats up turns around at me and goes, are you okay? And I was like, oh yeah, no, I was just laughing. She goes, at what? And I was like, what? And I remember that going, wow, I was totally a schizo in high school and didn't know it. <laughs> Do you get offended when people ask you if you're okay? Yes. Why? It's so annoying. But what if they really just want to know if you're okay? If I wasn't okay, I would bring it up. But how? I mean, how? Sincerely, you and I, we're, we're sitting here right now and we're talking. So you're telling me that if I collapsed right now and fell on the ground, you would wait for me to tell you that I was having a heart attack before you'd help no, me? No, that's different. That's Why different. is that different? Why? Why do we treat physical health and mental health differently? In my mental health, it's my mental health. It's my personal health. So it's okay to discuss mental illness publicly, but we can't discuss mental illness on a personal level without it being offensive. Well, if I was having an issue, I would discuss the issue. How would you know? I know when I'm having an issue. Do you? Because I asked you once if you were okay, and you told me yes, and you were not. Well, what was I supposed to say? No. And then I would have helped you. How? I don't know. I was going to call your mother. Well, don't do that. And why shouldn't I call your mother if I think that you're having a mental health episode? I wasn't having an episode. I ran out of medicine. So you didn't have the medication that you needed to live well with a serious and persistent mental illness, or as I like to call it, a lifelong disease of which you are being treated for. You ran out of the treatment and you wanted me to just sit around and hope you worked it out? I think my mom was on vacation. <laughs> That's what you've got? L listen, what I'm trying to say is, and I know I'm picking on you, and, and we kind of set this up a little bit. You're, you, you do a good job of playing dumb. But why do people get offended when people ask us about our mental health? I mean, we, I think we get offended. I know that I got offended at first because I felt that it was shameful. 
I felt that any talk about my mental illness was one, insulting, two, condescending, and three, I was embarrassed about it. If I broke my leg, I'd let everybody sign my cast. So I think that we need to bring in our pill bottles and let people sign them. I think we should just, we should just start a movement where we carry around our pill bottles and have people sign them just like it was a cast. You could do that, I guess. Or you could design a clothing line and then just wear it every day like it's all you own. No, oh, sorry, or, no, no. I'm going to start carrying on a notebook and I'm going to write mental health on the front. My, mm-hmm. or I'm going to title it my mental health. And then everyone that says anything, I could just have them sign. But the thing is, people used to, like, I used to hate that question when I was in college because things really weren't okay. So I really didn't like that question because I would just lie all the time. Do you think that that's an element that that question is more offensive or and maybe offensive is the wrong word. Do you think that question is more hurtful when we're not okay and we don't know how to ask for help? Yeah. I, I had a hard time with that. I didn't know how to ask for help. So I just lied. It, it just, are you okay? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I, I said that I was fine when I was actively depressed, delusional, and thinking about suicide. And people would ask me if I was okay. And I was like, hmm, let's see. I want to die. I hate my life. There's demons following me. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, I just, I had this routine. I had a routine with certain people in college, things I would do that would just help the situation. And I just remember one night, like getting close to graduation, this one girl outside the bar, I I had been avoiding this one girl for so long because I knew she was that kind of person. And she just like looks at me after three years since an incident and goes, Michelle, how are things and i look at her and just go great were they great nope do you think it would have been better if you were honest the thing is i was never her friend she just knew all of my business okay but uh, that's that's fine i understand why we hate certain people but is, is there anybody during that time frame anybody on the planet that could have asked you if you were okay and you would have given an honest answer nope Yeah. See, that's what we have to change. And that's what I think we're fighting for. That's the purpose of this podcast. Yes. So you turned 30. Is that the most offensive thing that you've ever heard as somebody living with schizophrenia? I'm a 30 year old schizophrenic woman. You have have new digits. Yay. And my license still has my 16 year old permit picture on it. That's right. I'm almost double that age. Wow. Yes. Almost double. Shut up. <laughs> All Still right. Just as bad a driver. Gabe, I know when people say these things, we want to just like punch them in the face, but like what should <laughs> we do instead? I, I, I think these do present little opportunities. I mean, it is as frustrating as it is, it, it does present an opportunity to discuss openly and productively mental illness. It does give us an opportunity. It gives us a a, a segue into the discussion about living with mental illness. And that is why we're advocates, because we want to discuss this with as many people as possible. So you're saying it opens a discussion. When people say dumb stuff, we can educate them? Yes. And remember, we have an opportunity to instigate a fight. That's the punching them in the face or educating them. And that's giving them the correct information and possibly changing their mind and letting them carry the message forward, which will ultimately make our jobs easier. So remember, when somebody says something stupid, you can instigate a fight or you can educate them. Choose educate. A man walks up to you and says, I understand that you live with schizophrenia, but why should I care about this? Everyone should care about mental health in general. It is almost epidemic in the country, especially in New York City. I always say one in five, it's almost one in four. You walk down the street and you see homeless people just begging. You can see that a lot of them have mental illnesses. And how how does that not affect you? How does that not make you upset? How do you not want to try to care for these people? It's going to somehow affect every single person in the country. I guarantee it. It's ridiculous that somebody would say that they don't care about mental health. There's no way that everyone is not connected to it in some way. 
you might have it yourself, a friend may have it, a family member may have it. It's so common that somehow everyone can be affected by it in some way. And one day maybe you decide to have children. What if one of your kids has a mental illness? How does one person feel about mental illness in that situation? It's so important to just care about mental illness. If you don't care about it, it just doesn't make any sense. We've all gotten on fights on Facebook. We, we all have. I've done it. You've done it. Everybody listening to the show that has a Facebook account has at some point gotten into an argument on Facebook. People don't listen. But they if become you an... haven't, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, yeah. If you're the one, you deserve a personal letter from Mark Zuckerberg. But here's the thing. When those arguments start, people become entrenched. That, that instigation, that escalation, people aren't listening to each other. They're just trying to be right and win. They become entrenched. So as much as it sucks as somebody living with mental illness, you know, I live with bipolar disorder and I have to manage it every day and I also have to be an ambassador for my illness. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't suck. But yeah, there, there is a burden on us to educate people. And if we can educate those people, life will get better for us and for all the people who are going to be diagnosed next year. If we could just educate people we could just change public opinions and that would be amazing. It would free up funds and resources to help us all. Thank you everybody for listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic and a podcast. And we will see you next week. Public opinion. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to psychcentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.